Welcome to today's Fireside Chat with Jesse. I am joined today by Linda Tears, Vice President of Based Government Finance. Thanks for joining me, Linda. Thanks for having me, Jesse. I appreciate it. Um, it. It's been a long time coming and it's good to see your face and really look forward to seeing you in person at some point in the future. No, absolutely. Um, I mean, we've been friends, I think, on Facebook for, I don't even know, five plus years. Yeah, many, many years. Almost like I talk to you every day, but I just kind of see what you're doing and we'll comment <laughs> there on things. But likewise, I mean, um, it's great to see your face as well. Thank you. Oh, I had a perm scheduled for this afternoon, but I figured being with you is more important. <laughs> I'm glad to see your, your humor never goes away. So, that's yep. awesome. so Linda, for the people who might not be familiar with you, do you mind just kind of like introducing yourself and your career, like how you got into equipment finance? Mm -hmm. um, again, my name is Linda Tears, and I'm with Baystone Government Finance, which is wholly owned by KS State Bank. We are a family owned bank, um, primarily located out of Manhattan, Kansas. We have branches um, all over the state of Kansas, as well as in Scottsdale, Arizona. So we have a, a good presence everywhere as far as our footprint goes. Um, as far as the municipal division of the bank, um, that was started in 1987, and uh, it was pretty cutting edge at the time that, you know, Phil Howe and Mike Daniels and Evan Howe, how they um, began this whole thing that's turned into an incredible opportunity. And I began with the bank uh, and with Baystone in 1991. So I just rolled over 30 years um, with the company. So I have had the um, incredible opportunity to grow you know, from the ground up. So I have really learned a, a tremendous amount, uh, not just from my coworkers and uh, colleagues, but yeah, it's it's been a good ride. I, I really enjoyed it. That's great. Um, so you've been with the organization for how long? 30 years. As of May of uh, 2021, I celebrated my 30 year anniversary with the bank. So it's uh, again, it's it's been a it's been a wonderful bank to work for. Um, being family owned, we still have a lot of latitude and decision making abilities that some of the larger banks probably wouldn't um, afford us. And so, um, you know, our bank president and uh, you know Evan and everyone, they just are constantly forward thinking and you know brainstorming. And so it's. We've always been not one to really keep it in the box. And, you know, that's what I, one of the things I love is I love being creative about getting a deal done. And so if I have that ability that I have that backing and I put it, a package together and it makes sense and it's a good fit for us, I love that, you know, they embrace that and they really want outside the box thinking. And uh, so it's, it's, it's a wonderful bank to be working for. No, and that's a good point because traditionally what you hear when people are associated with banks is it's mm -hmm. fighting over fractions of basis points. You exactly. Have box that has to do a certain thing, otherwise it doesn't apply and it gets boring. <laughs> so mm -hmm. the fact that you said that, I definitely see where that's very refreshing. Absolutely. And so what type of uh, industries does Baystone typically um, like partake in from a deal perspective? Baystone is, uh, we have always been focused primarily on the state and local municipal transactions. Um, I'd say probably 15 years ago, we started doing a few nonprofit deals. And when I say nonprofit, we don't really focus on necessarily the church market, but there are a lot of strong nonprofits out there. We've done a lot of YMCAs, a lot of really strong private schools. And uh, so we, we will also consider those deals, but our focus and forte has always been on the tax exempt lease purchase uh, financing window. And uh, we did, we've done, funded a few federal deals over the years, but those deals are just an utter nightmare. And, uh, you know, they can walk away because they don't like the color of the copy or they bought the next day. So we're just, you know, we've got a good space and we understand the risk in the municipal market and uh, have put together an incredible team from top to bottom that um, 
it, it's it's really been a good industry for us and a, and a good arm for the bank, a good division for the bank as well. No, I mean, I've met Evan, David, and a few other people from, mm -hmm. I've enjoyed my time with all of them. Um, the only issue I kind of have is the whole K-State thing, but. <laughs> well, we won't go there. We're hopefully going to have a good team this year. Everybody says jump from the Big 12. Right? And who knows what's going to happen. I went to West Virginia for the people who may not. Exactly. So who knows? I mean. I saw the Pac-12 potential merger, which means that West Virginia would most likely go to the ACC. Oh, wow. I, I, I don't know, <laughs> I, whatever. It's, it, I, I'm, you know, I can't keep up. I'm just excited about the upcoming football season. There will be full capacity unless something changes between now and then. But yeah, I have, I'm always up for and enjoying a little wager with you on the West Virginia K-State game. <laughs> Make sure we get that outlined, um, something, you know, not too crazy, but you know what, whatever. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> um, so the top women in leasing um, designation, congratulations mm -hmm. on that. Thank you very much. What did that mean to you, uh, Linda, when you got that email from the monitor? It was an incredible honor because uh, there are so many women in this industry that um, are just amazing. I, I mean, there's so many leaders, there's so many uh, idea sharers, and um, I, I just, to be put up on a pedestal with, you know, some of these other women, it, it just, it, it just feels good that, you know, all these years that I've been in the industry that you get recognized uh, for the work you put in and the relationships you forge. So, it, it really um, meant a great deal to me and still does. So I, I think they're doing an amazing job by having that focus on women. And, um, and, and it, you know, I thought about this the other day when I was thinking about our, our meeting. And um, when I first started going to conferences in late 90s, I, there was maybe a handful of women that went. And I mean, I'm maybe five. And, uh, you know, we first started our women in leasing luncheons. And again, we had one table, you know, there might've been six of us. Yeah, if we were lucky. And now when I go to a conference, we are at full capacity and have a room to ourselves. And there's probably more than 50 women that attend these. And it's just, a, you know, good camaraderie. Um, we don't, eliminate men from coming. As a matter of fact, Spencer Richmond attended one of our meetings with a wig one year. <laughs> so, but it's, it's, a, it's a really good group of women and I'm glad that there have been more up and coming in this industry. No, and I, I agree. Um, you know, and obviously I think I probably met you in 2005 when I first went to my first NEPA conference. Right. That core group of uh, women that we, uh, I guess, associated with NIFA. Now you see it just continue to grow, grow. Absolutely. Grow. You guys are finally getting, you know, recognition that is over, you know, well deserved, and it was overdue. Um, the whole men joining some of those things, I kind of, <laughs> I kinda on that because it's like, hey, let's have this be your event. Yeah, yeah. It I'm here to support whatever needed. But um, anyhow, it, it was just nice to see that the sense of humor because you know we'd always get. If you want me to dress up, I what I I have no just. <laughs> we'll keep that in mind. Maybe that's the West Virginia bet. <laughs> oh, okay. I guess it's on the internet, so it has to. It has to. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I mean, I could see that group is definitely growing, and then mm -hmm. I guess thoughts in regards to as you see more women take leadership roles in organization what are your thoughts on that well again I think it's incredibly rewarding to you know see that they're finally being recognized and um, um, you know I don't I don't want to say it's long overdue because I, I'm of a strong opinion that um, I think that you know the the harder you work you're, you're going to get noticed and you um, I don't want for someone to just give me a promotion because I'm a woman. And um, I'm not saying that I don't appreciate it, but I also want me, I want to get the position. I want to get the advancement because 
I'm deserving and I'm the best candidate for the job. Um, you know, but it is amazing and wonderful to see all of the advancements, you know, not just in the leasing industry, but nationwide that, you know, there really are a lot more women, you know, in, in top spots. And it's, it is refreshing to see because I know for a lot of, a lot of years, there was that glass ceiling where you just didn't think that that was an option, but I think it's more accepting. And uh, again, if, if you're the best person for the job, man, woman, whatever, I, I'm excited to see that that's, that's really, uh, that, that glass barrier has kind of been broken through. Oh, and you hit on a good point there. And that's kind of one of those things where obviously I'm on the other side of it. I'm a white male. So right. Experience some of those things. But that, like you said, that proverbial glass ceiling where now you're seeing, I mean, women like running leasing companies. I mean, Nancy Pistorio is going to be the first female ever um, to lead the Equipment Leasing and Finance Foundation. That's oh, wonderful. She's so qualified. Some of these things are just natural barriers that are being broken, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Good. I, I completely agree. It's been refreshing to see, especially over the last, you know, 10, 15 years, how things are progressing. Yeah. And I'm, I'm from a, the generation a little bit younger than I guess normal equipment finance people. So right. those, those things for me growing up to it, I was always a young person. So I was like, what do you want, kid? And everything else. I didn't really right. But I want to switch a little bit. So let's talk 2020 and 2021. Okay. You know, let's, I know you went through a lot. I don't know if, if you'd like to kind of share a little bit of your story of. Um... Yeah, you know, I am more than comfortable talking about everything. 2020 was brutal on everyone. So, you know, again, I'm just kind of, um, I don't really like to focus so much on myself because I know there's so many people out there that have had difficulty, not just with COVID, but, you know, other issues and whatnot. And, you know, 2020 for me, I, I lost my brother in July of that year. And then I was diagnosed with um, lobular breast cancer in November of 2020 and immediately had surgery, um, began chemotherapy in January, and then had 33 rounds of radiation um, that, that concluded um, the end of June, of which I immediately went on a trip. So um, it, it's, it's been an experience. Um, I, it's humbling because so many people come out of the woodwork that, that show they care. And I have an incredible family support system. My friends, I, I mean, between my conference friends, uh, local friends, every, everyone, has been so supportive. And uh, like I mentioned to you another time, you have to get, I have to get through things with laughter. And, you know, if I can make light of the situation and realize that I have it so much better than other people and just take it one day at a time and you have to laugh at yourself. I mean, I laughed the, uh, the last eyebrow or eyelash I lost. I posted it on Facebook because I thought, this is funny, you know, you have to laugh. Yeah, I, I saw that and I was just like, you know, I, admiration, I guess, Linda, for, um, for what you went through and the fact that you were posting constant updates on that and everything else and you see that support system and mm -hmm. family member on there. But I think sometimes it was almost more leasing family than everything else. And that's, that's fantastic. It was, it was. Again, it was, it was incredibly warming and humbling um, to have those friends and family and have everybody reach out. So I appreciate everything during that time and um, everything is behind me. And uh, so it's just onward and upward and uh, looking forward to the conferences coming up and the travel and uh, just could not be more excited. The NEFA event is coming up uh, for the ball game um, and uh, seeing everybody in person again is just going to be overwhelming and I, I couldn't be happier. Yeah, we had my, my first industry event back in June mm -hmm. up in Minneapolis and just seeing those people. And one thing I can say is 
I don't know if you've been on camera a lot for the last 18 months, um, you know, if you've ever, if you've been feeling up to it, mm -hmm. but it does help a little bit, but the feeling when you give, you know, exactly and everything else, it's like, okay, back to some sense of normalcy here. Absolutely. So yeah, it, like I said, it 2020 was, it, it was tough. It was tough for a lot of, it was tough for everybody. And, uh, getting back to those conferences and, uh, you know, just having that personal touch and uh, being able to laugh in person with everybody and share our stories and whether it's commiserating or laughing, it's, I'm just so excited to get back together with our conference families and, and uh, get back to normal. No, as am I. And I think probably the first conference I'll see you at is probably in Charlotte. Okay. Perfect. I just got everything set up for that. So I'm ready to go. <laughs> and um, I guess by the time this airs, I'd already air my one with Chad, I think the week before. Um, so they're anticipating a really good turnout. Be good. Four to 500 people, which is amazing. Oh, wow. That's incredible. That is incredible. I, I had a feeling that, you know, once everything was uh, firing back up, that everyone would be so overly excited to attend. So I think it's fantastic because I know the associations have, uh, in obvious reasons, have struggled, you know, be between, the, you know, the NEFA conference that was ready to go in San Antonio, and I'm sure they took a hit on a, a great deal of things, having to cancel that last minute. And so it'll be good to, you know, reinvigorate the associations um, with, with everything going back to in-person conferences. So I'm happy for that as well. And I'm excited that I, I, I've never met Chad in person, so I'm excited to, um, um, you know, meet him as our new executive director, fairly new executive director. So um, many things to look forward to. I agree. I agree 100%. And I'm looking forward to it. It's such an in-person, you know, industry. I think we've proven that we can be remote, but. Exactly. People. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I've been asking everyone who comes on here, Linda, a little fun fact about themselves. Um, is there anything people you want to share with people? Oh, a fun fact without embarrassing myself. Let me see. <laughs> um, I, I don't know really any fun facts. Obviously, I am a jokester. Um, that is certainly genetic in my family. I, I just, I like to laugh. I've been accused of smiling too much, which I will not apologize for. Um, I, I adore my family, kids and granddaughter. And uh, yeah, it's, I've, I've, got a, I've got a great life. No real fun facts. I have fun every day. And uh, so that's, I can't really pinpoint any one thing, so. Oh, that's fair. I was going to say your passion for sports is, huh. yeah. Love it. I don't, I, well, I, I mean, and I was sports oriented growing up. I, I, I think I told Randy, I can't remember who I told this, but I played competitive softball for a lot of years in high school and I was the catcher and I played the catcher because that's where all the action was. Yeah. And I, I just wanted to be where the action was. And, uh, so I followed sports from day one, huge Chiefs fan, and uh, obviously the Royals, you know, they're doing mediocre, but, you know, college, you know, I'm, you know, huge K-State fan and try to get to as many games as possible here in Manhattan. But um, yeah, I, I love, you know, trivia about sports. I can talk sports with just about anybody and uh, just, I, yeah, that, that's maybe a fun fact about most women probably are not into sports as much as I am, but I, I love it. <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's fantastic. Um, and kind of in closing here, of all the organizations out there to do business with, why, you know, why based on Linda? Well, as I touched on a little bit before, I mean, we have been in the industry for over 30 years and having that family owned bank feeling, um, we just have so much more to offer as far as the capabilities than you know, some of the bigger banks might offer. I mean, we might not be the lowest uh, rate in town, but um, I can almost guarantee you, and I'm not down talking any competition. I admire um, every, every colleague in the municipal industry, but we have our organization set up so much so that 
um, you know, I'll get a bid out within an hour, if not less, of a request. And I mean, it's it's all about keeping the wheels moving. And once we get a credit in, we'll get a credit turned around like that. I work so closely with our credit manager and our processing department, funding staff, our attorney is phenomenal. And so we just have such a well-rounded, well-oiled machine at this point that, you know, it's not just uh, come to us because, you know, we know what we're doing, but it's just that I think we have the full package and I think we have everything to offer our brokers and uh and i i have forged so many relationships with brokers over the years and it's it's really a lot of fun working with them and being able to be creative um and and get these deals done so that's like i said i i think we're pretty darn good but again i'm a little biased after 30 years <laughs> and obviously that bias makes sense right 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 However, it's do you want the traditional or do you want something exciting or do you want exactly that, that personal, uh, you know, attention that you guys give and based on what I know of Evan and David and the team there, you mm -hmm. got personal um, and you guys have great culture as well. And uh, I could see where there's definitely that good niche um, for you in this space. Yes, I, I it's it's worked well. And, and again, there's always brainstorming as far as how we can expand and um you know, Evan's always pushing everybody to think. And, and so I, I really uh, see many more years to come. Again, I think it's been a, a good division for the bank and uh, uh, we're fully supported and moving ahead. And, you know, frankly, through COVID, um, we had an influx, obviously, with the need of laptop financing with school districts. That was uh, that was huge. And um on the flip side of it, now we're seeing a lot of schools getting a lot of free money. And so there's kind of been a little dip, but you know, that's uh, again, we were fortunate through COVID to not have struggled as so many other companies did. So um, again, it's, it's you know, we're, we're constantly thinking to keep moving forward. Yeah, it's kind of one of those situations where you had some of those smaller micro ticket shops, like why are you only focusing on that business? <laughs> right. The last 18 months, you're like, huh, what? That's why. <laughs> Ebbs and flows. Nope, we're, we're, we're good. We're good. Exactly. All right, Linda. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to join me this afternoon. Um, I think we are, what, two months out? Eight weeks from? From Charlotte? Uh, maybe a little bit more, maybe 10 weeks. But I think I saw 61 days on the website when I registered this afternoon. <laughs> I'm excited for that. That's for sure. I, I am as well. I love Charlotte. So it'll be a good one to go to. So I look forward to seeing you there and couldn't thank you more for asking me uh, to join you for the fireside chat. Uh, again, I think you're doing a fantastic job and, and I really appreciate uh, you having me on. No, and I appreciate you taking the time and um, kind of like we were talking about before I hit the record button, um, you know, what you went through in these last, I want to say, eight to 10 months. Um, admirable. Um, Thank you. I appreciate you sharing your story. You're one of the strongest women that I've ever met. So. Well, I, I appreciate it. And uh, I, I, like I said, it's been a journey. And uh, if, if I can help somebody else get through something similar, we'll just lean on each other. And, you know, you, one day at a time, that's all you got to do. Absolutely. Keep smiling. We can do <laughs> All right, Linda, thank you very much. I'll talk All to you. All right. Soon. Thanks, Jesse. Take care.